special guest today is Lord John Taylor of Warwick. He was the first black conservative peer in the UK's House of Lords and a former special advisor to the UK government. Lord Taylor, welcome to Arise News Hour. Hello, Charles. Great to be here. Let's start with breaking news from this afternoon. Liz Truss, the UK Foreign Secretary, has said the West didn't act early enough or decisively enough in response to Russia's build-up of troops on the Ukraine border. As a one-time advisor to the UK government, how would you be advising them right now? Well, she's stating the obvious, really. We should have uh, seen this coming many, many years ago. But we are where we are. My mantra is faith, not fear. I know people are very frightened at the moment, but Putin is just a man and he's motivated by fear. But we have to look for practical solutions to end this madness where innocent people are being murdered. Because let's understand this is an invasion of a sovereign nation. It's illegal and immoral. That's the starting point. So you do agree, though, that um, the West didn't act early enough, enough or decisively? We should have done it years ago. Mm. Um, the thing is, Putin looks at the West as weak. We didn't act in Crimea. We abandoned the Afghans. And he thought, well, this is my time. Mm. But I think he's, he's got it wrong, though. Because even if, and it's a big if, even if he wins the war, he can't imprison the people. Mm. Ukraine is 42 million people. He can't imprison them all. Right. Briefly, some members of the UK Parliament have been calling for a no-fly zone over Ukraine. Do you support their call or do you support NATO, which says a no-fly zone will escalate the conflict? I think that could escalate the conflict. America are talking to Poland about supplying fighter jets mm. to the Polish who would supply them to Ukraine. That would be the way forward because the Ukrainians are winning the battle on the ground but not in the air. They need more planes, basically. Right. And Boris Johnson, the British Prime Minister, has just laid out a six-point plan. Not much new there, it seems. I mean, what's your assessment of that plan? Is it looking more seriously at what needs to be done? It's a bit vague. Um, it's built upon sanctions. Sanctions actually don't work historically. They do cause an effect, a harmful effect, but really on the people. They don't change government policy. Mm. And Charles, you have to remember that Europe is dependent on oil and gas from Russia. We buy 40% of our gas from Russia, 25% of our oil. We are paying Russia millions of dollars and pounds per day to Russia. We're paying Putin to bomb Ukraine. That is sheer madness. That has to stop. We have to look to alternative means of getting oil and gas. And, and with only 50 UK visas approved so far, I mean, up to earlier today, any insight into the appetite in this country for an expected influx of Ukrainian refugees? Well, we should have understood in advance that there would be a refugee problem. There have been 10,000 applications and only 50 visas awarded. And that's just a disgrace. These are people fleeing persecution. Mm. Now, a temporary visa, maybe, or even waive the visas. Other countries in Europe have done so. Why can't we? Mm. Let's have some compassion here. Isn't it inevitable that with no military intervention from the West and, and that, that Mr. Putin will eventually win this war and that NATO will have to tolerate his occupation of Ukraine, as you mentioned, as it did with Crimea and his incursion into Georgia? Uh, see, I don't agree that um, he's going to win, first of all. Even if he wins the battle, he can't win the hearts and minds of the people of the Ukraine. Yeah, but he says he's not going to stay in Ukraine. He just wants to make a point, achieve the, the agreements he wants achieved, and then he pulls out. I've got news for you, Charles. Putin lies. You can't rely mm. on what he says, basically. No, uh, NATO has a, to understand what it's for. This man understands force, not warm words. Mm. Well, what about the UN? I mean, you've been invited to speak at the UN yourself. What do you think of the charge that this crisis is showing the UN to be a toothless tiger? Is that fair? The UN was started in 1945 after the Second World War, and it's got just too many rules and regulations. It takes 12 resolutions to make a cup of tea, basically. 
It needs to look again at its foundations and its purpose. It's old and stale. Mm. Another black hole in this crisis is Russia's nuclear weapons, which are on full alert. I mean, the West has condemned it, calling it an unacceptable escalation. How realistic is the prospect of nuclear weapons being used in this war? Well, we have that deterrent as well. And I think that's what will stop him, you know, in the end. You have to remember, Charles, that Russia is part of Europe. It's not going anywhere. Mm. Putin is a man. He's not a god. He will eventually go. He will eventually die or be imprisoned. So we have to negotiate with Russia and sit down at the table. And the good thing is there are peace talks going on as we speak now. Mm. Lord Taylor, I want to thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Charles.